This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, GEICO can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners' or renters' coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today. Hey, all it's Miles. Thank you guys for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Have you heard our newest podcast? It's called The Greatest Story Never Told. Download it today on Radio.com. Be sure to subscribe. New episodes are uploaded every Tuesday at noon. How right, do we manage to drink it time? Somebody out there deserves to be recognized. And the Men's Room knows just who it is. So to you, we say... Bottoms up, sailor! Mastakia! You're the toast of our shot of the day. Big time it is, and as usual, we head to the drink desk and Steve at Throw Hill to find out who we're toasting. Yes, indeed. Today we toast an unidentified 50-year-old man. And to be fair, there's not a lot of details about him specifically because his story was shared in a medical journal from a very specific clinic because they deal with some odd things. And so they write, uh, this was case one, and... They write it very technically, so I've broken this down as best I can. I think you will get the gist. Now, in this case, the guy showed up complaining of, quote, painful urination. By the way, just so you know, they don't call it painful urination. There's actually a word that I had to Google because they have the medical term. But in the end, painful urination. And it did not take long for doctors to figure out the problem. He stuffed a plastic 10 centimeter long chapstick into his urethra. But it got stuck. He could not get chapstick. it. Chapstick. Chopstick. 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 Jesus. Chops. So I was like, that's too the thick. The tendon's chapstick. It's a little suggestive. <laughs> so it tended to chopstick into his urethra, but he got stuck. So then the man inserted a round magnet into his urethra to remove the chopstick. But the chopstick is plastic, so the magnet did not help. In fact, it made things worse because the magnet got stuck in his urethra too. But not one to give up or quit while he was ahead. The man then inserted a second magnet to pull out the first magnet. But instead, the magnet stuck together, but they stayed in his urethra, ah. along with the chopstick. Doctors performed surgery. He was in the hospital for 10 days after that, before he was finally able to leave the hospital. They did recommend him for some psychiatric help, but to read it hmm. the way they write it is much more terrifying, because they use all of the, uh, the Latin medical terms, so even though this is the gist of the story, it is... It is a very unfortunate thing. Apparently, this guy has had a habit, as far as they know, for the last three years of doing similar things. But this is the worst they've seen. Jesus. Yeah. So don't use magnets and chopsticks in your penis. Mm -hmm. That's the moral of the story, kids. You're welcome. So we pour this booze and we drink this booze because we think it's yummy. Yummy! So over the tongue and down the throat to party in our tummies. Down the whole la bitola! The Men's Room presents Profile This. And Stephen Throw Hill, can you please tell everyone how Profile This is played? I sure can, Miles. It's a simple game where we share with you a real-life news story, something that happened right here on planet Earth. Earth, 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 Earth. And as you listen to the story, based on the stereotypes you believe to be true of people and the decisions that people make, we'll ask you what it is you think makes the story a story. Hello, Hunter. Welcome to the Men's Room. Hola, gentlemen. Hola. All right, Hunter, you understand how this year game is played? Indeed. Fantastic. You know you have your choice of one of three stories. We have the wonderful world of drugs. We have bite me. In other words, what did someone find in their food? And finally, interior decorating, where you guess the foreign object that ended up on the inside of someone. Uh, let's go with drugs. Drugs. All right. Here is your story about drugs, and oddly, it's like a two-for-one because it also involves the man's anus. But I digress. A 48-year-old Florida man was arrested for driving under the influence of alcohol and possession of drugs. Marty Martinez, he was found sleeping behind the wheel of a pickup truck on the side of I-75. Deputy said he opened the truck's driver's side door, woke Martinez up, 
and he saw drugs and then noticed the strong, strong smell of whiskey coming from his breath. Martinez had bloodshot, watery eyes. He was speaking with slurred speech, had trouble performing tasks, or as you and I call it, he was drunk. When the deputy asked Martinez to get out of the vehicle, well, I forgot to put the car in park and it rolled forward. So the deputy had to put the vehicle in park so that Martinez could finally exit the vehicle. And after failing multiple field sobriety tests, the deputy arrested Martinez under probable cause for driving a car under the influence of alcohol and drugs. He was a bigger man, so the deputy used two sets of handcuffs to detain this guy, citing concerns for comfort. But while Martinez was in the back of the patrol car, the deputy watched as he took multiple phone calls and then pulled two baggies out of his pockets. As the deputy was completing paperwork, Martinez shoved both bags up into his anus, which is a promise of future fun for all involved. Well, after being transported to the jail, he was required to do a strip search. That's where the baggies were recovered by deputies. And a drug test confirmed that it was, in fact, drugs. The search of his truck revealed another baggie of the same drug and a bag of marijuana. What drugs did Martinez shove up his derriere? Was it methamphetamine, heroin, cocaine, or bath salts? Oh, I guess all of those you could park in your rear end. I mean, it can be done. I mean, this guy did mm-hmm. it in handcuffs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you said this is Florida? It, it is, in fact, Florida, yeah. So that makes me believe cocaine, but that would be the obvious answer. Uh, let's go bath salts. You're going to go bath salts? Yeah, why not? Okay, Hunter. I think what I'm going to do here is I, I don't know. I think if you would have bath salts, you'd be acting a little bit more irrationally, but you would be awake. Uh, cocaine. If you have that much coke in your car, because there was another bag in the car of whatever he had, you should be awake. Meth tells me you should be awake. So I'm going to go, and meth and cocaine are pretty easily available in Florida. So I'm going to go, the guy was trying to save his heroin. That's my final answer. But you're going to stick with bath salts, right? Well, yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, I'm going to stick with bath salts. Okay. Why not? We're going to find out what this guy was on. Meth, heroin, cocaine, or bath salts next. That was a tease. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. GEICO asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, GEICO can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners' or renters' coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today. The shenanigans continue. This is the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Category is uh, drugs on profile. This Florida man arrested for DUI and was in possession of drugs. Police found him. He was slumped over the wheel there. They actually had to jump in the car and stick it in park. It was drifting away. Either way, they handcuffed him, and uh, somehow he was able to check his phone, and he pulled out uh, a couple baggies of drugs from his pockets. He ended up shoving those in his backside. Question is, what were the drugs? Meth, heroin, cocaine, or bath salts? Mr. Montgomery, we'll start with you. Miles, you guess heroin. I did. Yeah, oh, I'm afraid it was not heroin. Now, Hunter, you went with bath salt saying, well, it's Florida. You ain't going to get any drug, but let's face it, Florida is probably the bath salt capital of the United States, right? No, it was not bad salts either. In this case, it was your tried and true cocaine. Get out of here. Yes, indeed. Now for all TV news all the time, it's time for TV Time with Tim. And now, because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box, the Men's Room presents TV Time with Ted. Ah! Look who it is, it's Mike Hart. Well, hello, everybody. Good news, gang. I have watched a new show. All right. new, I watched a new show over the weekend. I had been advertised this one on my Facebook, on my Twitter, Instagram, the TikToks, all over the place. I've been told, you got to watch this show. It's on Amazon Prime, and it's called Panic. Have you guys heard of the show? I have not. No. So here's the, here's the whole idea of the show, is that there's a town in Texas. It's called Carp, I believe, Carp, Texas. Mm. And the school there has a tradition, at least the seniors have a tradition there, where all graduating sen- seniors are eligible to play this game that is called Panic. And in the game of Panic, they're going to take you to the to the brink of your of your 
mental fortitude. They're going to test you. They're going to basically try to make you panic. And and uh, if, if you do panic, then you then opt out, out of this game. And the last person standing wins the grand prize. They take a an amount of money from students as the school year goes on. And that is the pot at the end of the year. This particular year, it is $50,000 right, that these kids can win, right? And it starts by they're, they're jumping off this massive cliff into water below. Like, nobody is supposed to get hurt during this game. Yeah, supposed to. But it is very like, not very likely, but there, it is a very real possibility that you could get hurt okay, during sure, this sure. game, right? They're going to test you mentally. The thing about this, uh, th- this show and this premise, it has a good premise, but I think it was rushed. The storyline is right. is decent, but it's not quite all the way thought out yet, and the dialogue is subpar at best. Uh-oh. I'm not a fan of this dialogue. The acting was good enough, especially okay. with what they had to work with. And I also, I've, I've said this before, that I think part of my biggest issue with this show is that I was about 12 years too old to watch it. This feels very okay. much like a very young adult, brand new adult type of show. Okay. So it's got all... <laughs> exactly. So if you're in that age group, if you're of that mental group, have at it. I watched all, all 10 episodes on Sunday. It was fine enough to watch. I didn't care enough about it to stop watching, I should, I should say. They were good at, at cliffhangers, and, and it does like M Night M Night Shyamalan could have directed this thing just because of how many twists and turns Twisted, were all over the place, but inevitably disappointing. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, well, you saved a lot of my time. Thank well, you. there you go. I'm glad. So, yeah, that's that's called Panic, and that is on Amazon Prime. However, that's what I watched over the weekend. But I know that a handful of people watched something else. There was a massive combat sporting event over the weekend in the world mm-hmm. of boxing. Floyd Mayweather Jr. taking on Logan Paul, the YouTuber that has now been turned into some major type of boxing. Provocative. Something. He, yes. went, he went the distance. So, yeah, from what I've heard, this from pretty much everybody is that this was an eight round hug fest. Oh, uh, a little bit. Well, I, mean, I watched it, and look, it, it became a hug fest because both guys needed to do it. One, Floyd's retired, right. and he's fighting a guy considerably larger. And one thing about Floyd, he, he's never been known as a knockout puncher. Okay. He's a better technician than most boxers, and he would survive them. It's like Roy Jones Jr., you know what I mean? Turn your shoulder, take a few hits. Score points with the fact that you can land blows anymore, but you're really not knocking a lot he's of a, people He's out. a technical fighter. Sure. And you're fighting a guy who, by comparison, is a mm-hmm. giant. Now, I'm not necessarily a fan of Logan Paul, but I got some respect for him yesterday because the dude could actually box. And that's, oh, and no that's, kidding. That's, yeah, May, he, that's Mayweather's style no matter who he's boxing. Right. He never really does anything other than kind of get close, take his shots when he can. There's never a knockout. It's always a boring fight. It normally goes the distance. And Mayweather's right. plan is you're going to throw enough punches at me where you're going to get worn down. And then I'm still going to be in pretty good shape in those last, the last rounds. four rounds. I'm going to keep tight. I'm yeah, not going to knock you out, but right, I'm going to keep exactly. I'm going to keep yeah, but Logan Paul, he actually he fought pretty well. I mean, I'll be honest. I watched it. and I'm like, all right, man. He, you can tell he has legit technique. He's obviously really training, and I don't know what he does on YouTube. I do not care what he does on YouTube because my interest in him is him stepping in a boxing ring, right? And he has clearly been serious about his training. I'm not saying he's the greatest boxer ever, but I was stunned. That his form looked good. Right. You got a few wild punches here and there. That's inevitable. But yeah, his form looked good. He seemed to know what he was doing. Well, and, and what Ted alluded to the last time that he talked about this this deal as it was coming up is that Logan Paul, of the two of them, got, you got Logan Paul and you got Jake Paul. Mm-hmm. And Logan Paul seems to be the more quote unquote respectable of the two. He was taking this thing seriously. He knew he was who he, he was going to. up he against. He was fighting one of the greatest yeah. fighters of all time. Absolutely. You know? and, and it was his brother. Uh, 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 Jake, that was the one that was screwing everything around. Like he, he was the one that grabbed his hat and he acted like a child out there, and he was just making things worse. He was drumming up the jo- drama between the two. Well, if so, I'm not going to step in the ring and get punched by someone, I'm going to drum up the drama as well. Exactly. Yeah, right. If I'm not going to have to actually I'm not go in the there one, and take right. the punch, have you ever seen the hype leading up to you know WrestleMania? It's not like, oh, we all get along. Right. It's going to exactly. be great. We're just going to go to a big arena and you know we're going to wrestle and see what shakes out. But I remember when uh, when Mayweather fought Conor McGregor when he came over. That was a big argument. That that a lot of people that, like myself, had not ever really watched boxing had when it came to Mayweather is that it seemed like he just hung back through most of the fight and then he turned on the heat in like the seventh or eighth round. But that's what Mayweather does. Exactly. The problem is this. You know, Mayweather, and look, he... He is not the best boxer I've ever seen, but the guy's 50-0, and a lot of him being 50-0 is dodging. Right. You know, not not dodging fights. He'll fight whoever you put mm-hmm. up there. But, I mean, he's not trying to get hit. And, like, I'm a guy that loved Mike Tyson back in the day. So, in my mind, you got their mall people. And I'm going to Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier, all this kind of stuff. But those are guys who, by their nature, were maulers. Right. right. Th- that's just not. If you like Roy Jones Jr., you probably like Mayweather. The guys that kind of, they shift and bump. But, to their credit, 
both of those guys took the fights that came their way. Like Lennox Lewis, who was a heavyweight, who eventually beat Mike Tyson. He dodged Mike Tyson on four separate occasions when Tyson was on top of his game. Uh-huh. He didn't want to stick. He was going to get killed. Sure. Would, right? So... So he's not. So whatever people think of Mayweather, at least he'll take the fight if you give it to him. I bet it was entertaining. I bet the whole card was entertaining. It was. You know, that's not what people are saying. According to the New York Times, says Floyd dominated, but that's not saying much. He never went in for the kill, and the quote exhibition was a uh, as it was billed went the full, not terribly exciting eight rounds. It says fans started booing towards the end of the eighth when they realized that nobody was hitting the canvas. Paul gassed out pretty early, but did uh, did land a few shots here and there. He tried to exploit his thirty four pound weight advantage by leaning on Floyd as much as possible because that's part of the technique of boxing. And again, to, like any combat sport, there's weight classes. Sure. So you take a guy who they would never fight each other in the real world. No. You don't weigh him by that much, of course you're going to lean on them. They lean on each other anyway, and the difference is two pounds. Well, and just seeing them side by side, uh, Logan Paul's got to be, what, a foot taller than Mayweather? Yes. He's huge. You got the reach, you got the weight, I mean... Okay, is is Logan Paul tall, or is Floyd Mayweather short? (sighs) I would never call him that to his face, I know Mayweather's short, but I don't know how tall Logan how tall Logan Paul is. But again, standing next to him, it's like, wow. Sure. Because keep in mind, again, anytime you see Mayweather, typically he's fighting in his weight class and all those guys are built about the same. Right. Uh, it does say that Paul admitted that he would go home wondering if Floyd let him survive, but he added, quote, it's an honor uh, to grace the ring with him. He's uh, This is the coolest thing ever, which, like Miles, as you said, you are fighting the greatest boxer, at least of the modern era, if not of all time. Mm-hmm. So, and then... Uh, and you go the distance with him. Absolutely. And then so Mayweather- you win, basically, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> right. I mean, you win as a human being. You don't win the boxing match. Right. But you didn't wake up in the hospital. Mentally, you know what I mean? Like, I I can, I, can, I can go the distance with the guy. Absolutely. And then uh, Mayweather had this to say. I wanted to get the people on the show, and he was fighting to survive. Every time he punched, he had clinch. He was a bigger guy. His background is wrestling, if I'm not mistaken. So he was good at tying me up. And I really believe that he was, you know, just going the distance. That was a win for him. So he was happy. Because at the end of the day, I'm going into the Hall of Fame for boxing. And um, I, don't, I have nothing to prove. Um... I had, a, I, had a, I, had a, I had a, you know, when I was competing, I had a great career. If they're happy with holding eight rounds, you know, dancing and grappling for eight rounds, congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that Logan Paul had any kind of combat background whatsoever. Oh, either way, doesn't matter. He's still going against one of the best boxers mm-hmm. of all time. Exactly. And you know what? I think for Mayweather, at the end of the day, like, he said he's going to the Hall of Fame. He's won anyway. That... Purse is uh, is also pretty generous when it comes mm-hmm. to just yeah. Uh, and and you, said an extra- Chad, you said Chad Johnson's fight was entertaining. He it did was. a good job. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. I was surprised. I'd be like, oh, come on. Ocho oh, Cinco. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, some reminders for you guys tonight. I knew that you thought it was done. I knew you thought that you were out of it. But fear not. It's back. The 17th season premiere of The Bachelorette oh, yes. starts at 8 o'clock tonight on ABC. People will be watching. They will indeed. And if, uh, <laughs> and if you're going to watch anything late night tonight, I would pick Seth Meyers. He's got Patrick Wilson. Thank you so much, Mike. We appreciate it. You are listening to The Men's Room. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, GEICO can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners' or renters' coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. All right, here we go. Florida woman gets naked and destroys an Outback Steakhouse, just like an Australian bush ranger. Meanwhile, a Texas mom is arrested after posing as a 13-year-old to show the school their security poses a danger. Man wins one million at Michigan gas station, which really pumps him up. The German military in Afghanistan no longer has delicious beer to pour in their cup. And a fellow with no gun permit tries to bring a gun into a carry-on at Pittsburgh Airport. That did not work out. It is time for a headline. Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's my cock. Hey, top story. People are known to make mistakes when something big happens in their lives, and such is, this, uh, is the case for one man in Michigan. He was filling up at a local gas station and took it upon himself to buy a scratch card. 
As the car was filling, he played the game and revealed that he was the lucky winner of the $1 million prize. He was so stoked about his winnings that he drove off with the gas hose still attached to his car. Oh, God. Well, now he has the money to pay for it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It did, they did say that they'd... Uh, they didn't know if, if him doing that caused any damages because I know that a lot of pumps nowadays have like a quick disconnect because right. this dumbass thing has happened enough huh. to where they, to where they made it just quick For disconnect. people hey. that did not just win a million dollars? Exactly. Right. I actually saw it happen one time. It was the craziest doggone thing. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Uh, another news, Florida being Florida, a woman needed to be tased before taken into custody. Video evidence confirms a report that came to police about a naked woman wrecking up a local Outback Steakhouse. The video shows the woman standing on top of the counters inside of the restaurant, throwing bottle after bottle of wine off of the shelves. She's facing aggravated battery charges, among other things. You're single, and she asks you out. Knowing you've seen this video, she seems normal at the time. Do you go out with her? I would really need to know what caused that video. One night. One but night. you're still even contemplating. You just need to know... A few things to right. get past, but you'd still... Did a friend drug you? Did you drink right. too much? What did was the see, drink? Did you see the video? Yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, you would think she would just take her hand and rake it across the shelf. No. She nope. went one bottle at a time. She did. And not only that, but she broke all the bottles into the bar area and right. then walked back there barefoot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then got tased. Yeah. What are you thinking? PCP. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe meth. I nah, probably more meth, because PCP... I think as I watched you get tased, I feel like PCP, it takes two or three of those That's to get some fair. of them. That's fair. she dropped quick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Into the broken glass. I'm yeah, exactly. Yeah, man. Afghanistan has a bit of a beer issue. The commander of the German troops in the country made the decision to ban the consumption of beer in the country due to security reasons. This decision led to a massive pile of beer that had no place to go. Troops were tra- traditionally allowed two cans of beer per day, but now they're working to move the beverage back out of the country. Come on, One guy blew that for That's everybody. right. Really? You would you oh, just probably, know yeah. that there was something know. dumb that happened. He collected all of his beers. Be, he drank what he was supposed to be, you know, on post or whatever the deal was. Right. Something something happened. Somebody slipped up. Exactly. That's right. A man in Pittsburgh has landed himself in hot water after forgetting a little something in his bag at the airport. TSA stopped him at a security checkpoint after he was found to have a loaded 45 caliber pistol in his carry-on luggage. On top of not possessing a uh, concealed carry permit, the man isn't even supposed to have a firearm at all due to a previous conviction of a felony burger, bur- burglary. He's facing serious charges. you got to remember that mm-hmm. stuff, man. You've got to. That's all. I understand that accidents happen. I know somebody who is who is victim to that accident of happening. but <laughs> Someone man, close? Especially when you have a felony burglary charge. You right. really or, need to keep track of that. The reason he didn't have a carry permit. He couldn't get one if he wanted one. Right. And that felony charge was from all the way back in like 1987 or something Damn. like that. You know, though. Right. You right. know. Like, you know. Yep. You get something taken away from you, you know. I mean, every time I travel, I grab an entirely new bag because I never know sure. what residual. I mean, I accidentally went to the airport and joint my wallet before weed was legal. Right. No idea it was in there until we had landed in San Francisco, went to pay a bar tab, and I'm like, I just went to the airport with weed. Right. Oops. Sweet. Oh, it, it came in hand. Well, let me try that then. Yeah. I'm sure it's okay. That's why I always leave something in the main compartment of the bag. That way, I, it reminds me that there might be some other stuff within this bag that I need to just, you know, scrape through real quick. Make sure that everything's out of there. Every time they have those dogs sniffing around, it's like, what do you have in the bag? I'm like, I don't know. I honestly <laughs> don't know. Uh, another story where things uh, not where they belong. A woman is also facing charges for trespassing at her daughter's school. The woman posed as her 13-year-old daughter and infiltrated the school in an attempt to show how weak the security was. She donned a hooded sweatshirt complete with a mask to uh, near completely hide her face and posted several updates to social media documenting her progress within the school, claiming to even have had uh, face-to-face conversations with staff. Officials got wind of the video and arrested her on an outstanding traffic charge, uh, tacking on criminal trespassing charges along with it. I mean, a lot of places don't have great security, but... The hope is that human beings, generally speaking, are decent. Right. When I walk into a restaurant, there's not generally armed security patrolling it. No right. naked women throwing bottles around. Right. I mean, because every once in a while, somebody does something stupid. Overwhelmingly, they don't. Right. Right. I, th- 
I don't think Outback is going to have a whole new policy. It's like, look, this naked lady's crazy. Most of you come right. in here clothed and eat food. I think her point was just how far she was able to make it. Sure. Because I think the only reason that she got caught is because the schools found the social media videos that were there. She was in, in classes on her phone. Like, she was almost pushing the edge of how how much attention she could bring to herself. I She's sitting there in class this. on her phone, and they said, hey, just get off your phone. They didn't, they didn't ask who she was. She, she didn't must, know who she, she was. She must look young. Yeah. Her age. If she's to look like a seventh grader is the crazy thing. Impersonating a thirteen year old and you are the parent of one of the children. You must look young. That's right. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> You're at the school of the blind. Exactly. There's a comedian in hot water for his journey about the country. He started chronicling a series on Instagram in which he hit a golf ball in all fifty states in thirty days. The problem is when he got to Wyoming, he did it inside of Yellowstone. That's not okay. And that is it for your headlines with that. Mike Hawk is out. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Ryan Castle joins us. We will sit and spin. We got the top ten guitar riffs of all time. Yeah. Yes, indeed. In the meantime, we be all about this bitch. So until next time, please do what you do best. And for Aletha's sake, stay beautiful. The men's room has been taped before a live studio audience. Wardrobe and makeup provided by Mantastic Limited. This has been a presentation of the Men's Room Radio Network. Oh, man. A Double Flush production. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org.